Hello, um, earlier today I fitted that strut and paint, painted that bit of um, chassis rail there uh, so I thought well I might as well try and put the other strut together so I've taken the spring and cleaned it and put a coat of paint on it and there's the suspension top mount the spring top mount and there's the shroud and there's the bearing I filed the whole round and then welded another piece in and then filed the flat to turn that 180 degrees. There is one of the suspension bottom, the track control arms hanging up there. There is the other one. Cleaned and painted those. Yeah, so, you know, just cleaning wire wheeling, cleaning, painting, all these things that you kind of, you don't realise just how long it takes. But anyway, I've done that. So I was just, I was just thinking I might come out and put a coat of black paint on everything. I'm not sure, to be honest. I, I could actually assemble the strut and then paint the strut afterwards. I might do that. I think I've got everything in place to be able to assemble that strut. There's the strut. You can see as usual I'm kind of working in a mess. The way I hold the strut is around here and it'll probably get marred up so it'll probably be best to build it up and then touch the painting afterwards. I might do that, yeah I might do that. But anyway I just, I just wanted to show that I have been doing some cleaning, painting, getting stuff prepared up. I, I don't want all the bits hanging around. I want to get stuff assembled so that it's all in one place. OK, righto. I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Back in a bit. I couldn't get that foot valve in from the top. So I've just kind of dropped it in. You know, it's getting stuck where I'd welded it. Okay, so what does that mean? I need to sort of just see if I can get it to drop down square and then I can put the tube onto it. By using a strong light and a piece of metal to flick it around, I've managed to get it down into the seat at the base there. Okay, judging by where that's sitting, that is down. Now, oil. I just just realised something. On the other strut, I didn't put the O-ring around the top, so I've got to take it out and strip it down again. But it's got reasonable resistance, so fair dues. Because I'm getting it dirty and I've got to deal with grease, 
at the top. I think I will leave it and I will degrease it and paint it and paint all the other bits and then assemble it up with the with the painted pieces instead of just the the red oxide. I think I'd do better to paint it but at least I've assembled the pieces together. Yeah that's all right actually. Okay so because it's actually relatively light I'll probably leave it at that. Although no I'll probably just put a lick of paint on those other parts. Okay you don't need to watch me painting stuff so Thanks very much for joining me in the garage. Take care and I'll catch you next time. Hello, as usual I did the exact opposite of what I thought I was going to do. Um, I have assembled up this strut and I'm going to have to think about how to paint it tomorrow now. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, okay. Assembled all the bearings up, greased them up, got the nut on turns okay the shroud is tight so the nut is tight um, I can talk it a bit more when when I can hold it a bit better um, and I took the steering arm I took the steering arm off one of the other struts to put it on so that's all good so that strut other than paint it's ready to go on that side but like the other side I will clean and paint that chassis leg before I put it on so that's a job for tomorrow clean and paint the chassis leg paint the strut take that strut off dismantle it fit the o-ring and uh, reassemble it A pain oh well at least I've gathered all the parts together so I know all the parts are there that, that's kind of more or less what I'm you know one of the things that's going through my mind have I got all the parts yeah only by putting stuff together can you make sure you've got all the parts so there's one strut the other one's in the car but needs a slight modification so yeah things are progressing and I've got the track control arms. Uh, there's one just dangling down there. And there's another one hanging on the back of the door there. So they're all okay. Got good bearings at the top. Good top mounts. And yeah, everything's shaping up nicely. Still got gaping holes in the car. Lots of work to do, but yeah, like I have said, I hurt my eye recently, so I'm kind of doing what I'd call lighter jobs. If you understand what I mean, stuff that doesn't involve grinding and you know, grinding welds and things and having sparks flying everywhere underneath the car. I just don't want to do it. I could fit the... I might clean that area there and put a bit of paint in that and then uh, look at putting the radiator in. And then maybe look at the front panel, maybe look at the front wing, things like that. Oh, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, I, fit, I did fit the other coil. I bought a coil. So I fitted that, and it's the old-fashioned type with a screw fitting. So I hope that works. Okay, right, that'll do. Unusual for me to do an evening session, but I just fancied trying to get something assembled up. If you put all the brakes on and the hub on and everything, it makes it a little bit heavy to manhandle. You might as well put those on after it's on the car. Okay, righto. Not too bad then. I'll uh, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Cheers then.
Bye. Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. It's the next day. Let's, I've just come out about half hour ago and I've um, given that strut a coat of paint. Now, can I just say, trying to paint it assembled is a lot. It wasn't a good idea at all. I would have been much better to have took the time and painted it before I assembled it. So anyway, there's that strut. There's the track control arm hanging up there, one of them. There's another one hanging up there. Now, la last night, I realized that I'd left the O-ring out when I assembled this strut. So that does mean I'm gonna have to take it off put the spring compressors on, compress the spring, dismantle the bearing, undo the gland nut at the top, put the O-ring in. So I've got to take that off, do all that, and, um, you know, get it assembled up again, which is a bit of a pain, but, you know, that's life. Such is life. So I thought, well, I'll put the coat of paint on those first, and then I can be doing that while that paint is drying i dare say it probably won't even be dry even then but uh you know i can give it a go right now so i will start working on that sorry where was i so the paint's drying on that and there's my strut actually i'm spoofing i've i've taken it off take it in the side shed dismantled it put the o-ring in reassembled it and put it back on it didn't take very long at all, to be honest. You know, when everything's ready to go, you know, all the bearings are clean and greased and all ready to go. The top comes off as an assembly. Nothing's tight to undo. All the tools are in place. Everything's ready. It takes no time at all. Okay, so um, I think that paint will take quite a while to dry. Yeah, so I'll probably do the steering arms and the anti-roll bar. Okay, back in a bit. Hello, um, sort of uh, 20 minutes under the car and I've got these off. I don't know, I'll have a look what it's like after I've given a good wire brush. Okay, back in a bit. I, I painted that the other day, but what I did just now is I'm going to push, drop the phone down here and you should be able to see where I've painted inside there. Just put a little bit of paint there and if I swing the phone round you should be able to see where I've painted the same thing there and basically I went under there and painted all along there wire brushed and painted so that's got a coat of red oxide and then I did under the underneath thing and that area there that I'm pointing the camera at now was covered in um, thick grease and the metal was absolutely perfect. Hanging up there are the steering components, the track rods. So there's inner and outer track rod ends. And what I did with these was I held this in the vise, undid each end and without losing the position of it, I made sure that this was free to rotate in there and this was free to rotate on there. So everyone could be adjusted. And they're, they're all actually in serviceable condition. I was, I was quite impressed actually. This design with the jam nut, when I slacken the jam nut, the threads in here are absolutely perfect. I think when you've got the split and the clamp, the threads in here can, you know, get moisture and rust in them, can't they? So, so this is actually a good design for, you know, um, older things. Everything there is perfectly serviceable. Um, there's the track control arm. Again, perfectly serviceable. And I've got new bushes to go in there. So I've got two of them two of them um, oh yeah that was it this is what and I, I cleaned up the anti-roll bar as well and gave that a coat of paint right on. 
so it's quite a lot of quite a lot of work just lots of fiddly detail little work it's virtually impossible to just repair a car because you always feel like everything you touch you want to make sure it's good and in good condition and perfectly serviceable but you want to kind of future proof it you know you want to make sure it will continue to be in good order and good condition and will last a long time so it it is very difficult to avoid mission creep and there's always this complete side of the car which i haven't touched which doesn't look great so there's lots more to do i had a look online and i looked up quick drying paint and i've been and bought a tin of this all coat exterior satin this is where i was using this came from lidl's i think parkside um so i've painted all under there given this strut a bit of a touch up and um, painted under there painted all those bits on the inside that i showed you painted exactly the same thing on the other side painted the track rods uh, and i painted the anti-roll bar this paint's a little bit kind of much easier to brush it's a little bit thinner i would say but it does appear to be faster drying it does it, it does appear to be a good quality paint um might need a couple of coats but you know the fact that it dries so much quick the the piece on the top there is almost touch dry and it's only been about half an hour it says touch dry within an hour or something like that so yeah so i'm hoping i'll make better progress with that paint because you know i'm what i'm waiting ages for this other stuff to dry this is dry now but i painted this this morning it's, it's now sort of eight o'clock in the evening so all this stuff that i've been painting will be ready to go tomorrow so tomorrow i'll get all the front suspension on the everything both sides steering and everything i wanted to kind of tidy up a few loose ends and not be welding and grinding under the car because um, it's knocked me back a little bit when I hurt my eye. Yeah, I'm about 95% there with the vision in my left eye. It's, it's coming back. Okay, that'll do for this little session then. Thanks for following along. Thanks for joining me, even on these sort of tedious little nicky nacky sort of jobs. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye. Hello. Welcome to Mark's Garage. I've been working on the front suspension components and they were all painted yesterday and yesterday evening. So hopefully they should all be ready to go on now. So I'm going to, bit by bit, methodically start assembling the front suspension. Let's just hope it all goes okay. I've got the new bushes, um, so I'll show you those and then... I'll start assembling things up. I'm not sure of the correct order, but I'll just kind of wing it. Well, there's the bush kit that I bought. Um, yeah. Ooh. That don't look right. Shit. Oh yeah, the job started badly. I cut my finger opening the, opening the thing, used a blade and cut my finger. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Right, that's wrong, look. Okay, that one's okay. That one's okay. And that one's okay. Right, so, okay. I need to I need to get in touch with the seller because I've, I've actually got some of them bigger ones because they're them are off the console Capri. Yeah. Okay. 
So them three are okay. And that one's bigger. Yeah, you can see it, can't you? I've actually got I've got four of them. Anyway. The others look alright. Okay. Let's see if I can contact the seller. Hello, right, I've I've just done a test fit of the bushes in there and I use like um tire soap to bed the bushes in so that they would go in nicely into the arm there's the arm I have got it on there but I know I do need to fit the things but that can come off I kind of pushed it in and wobbled it around and then hit it on the end with this hammer hit it on there and then kind of teased it in position using this so I will go and sort the bolts out, clean the bolts up, put, and put a bolt in there. Um, the good news is, regarding the bushes for here, um, the seller messaged me back within, you know, within half an hour of me writing to him saying the bush was wrong, saying he's going to put a new one in the post, uh, the correct type. So that's good, isn't it? That's good service. But what that meant to me was that I could then proceed with fitting the bushes from the kit. Okay, um, I just noticed the strut from this angle and yeah, I think it's fair to say I missed a bit. So definitely worth painting the parts before you assemble them. Anyway, it's in there now and you can see how the, you know, how it pivots on the ball joint there. Okay. So I'll go and sort my bolts out and fit a bolt. There's a bit of a it's a bit of a heave ho and a push and a pull, but you know, they go in normally. Righto, back in a bit then. Um I use my spike to manoeuvre the first part of the bush in line and got the bolt started, and then I tapped it in. And it was obvious that it wasn't aligned with the rear parts of the hole, but I just sort of wobbled this like this as I kept on tapping, just tap, tap, tap. And then, you know, at one moment in time, it happened to align and uh, went in nice and easy. This comes in and out of there easy when this is, you know, able to come right the way down. Um, when I was trying to dismantle the other side, there was so much tension in the front suspension from the front link, which goes to there, being in place, that uh, it wouldn't actually, rather, I couldn't tell that it had popped off the taper. It was pushed up so tight against it. Okay, back in a bit then. Hello. That was a bit of a game, putting that nut on there. Um. I offered everything in, got it in place and started the nut, but of course as soon as the nylock bit hit the stud, the stud started to turn. So I thought, okay, old trick, right? Get a plain nut, put that on first. So I put the plain nut on first, tightened it up, took it off, put the lock, put the um, nylock on and it, it busted loose I hadn't tightened this one enough so I um, put the so I, I tried hitting this up into there didn't lock it in so I put the jack under the arm jacked it up a bit put some tension on it and it went round a bit more then it started turning again so in the end I took my big copper hammer and hit it on there and that did lock the taper enough to finish tightening that so I've tightened that and talked it up so yeah quite a, you know just a bit of a, a game at every step really anyway it's in now so that's good okay righto back in a bit the second side went together quite quickly using lessons learned yeah that that bolt went in, in there quite easily, you know, shove it in, wobble it about. This went in here and I used this 
nut and did it up good and tight and then took it off and put the lock nut on put the uh, lock, the nylock nut on okay yeah so that's looking good okay I'm just thinking about trying to put the other piece in now the uh, anti roll bar now years ago I remember a friend describing it as you had to use like a Spanish windlass which is like a piece of rope wrapped around and then you put a stick in it and turn it but I think we've got ratchet straps now so we might be okay so let's give that a go and let's see if that we can get that in place hello right so I've um, put this ratchet strap on I didn't attach it to the anti roll bar I've attached it to the strut so it's less likely to sort of slip around so I've attached it there and I'm just offering it up I'll put a couple of bits I'll put a you know a few clicks on of, of tension and um, it's it's nowhere near so I'll put I'll put a bit more on too much you just saw me do that that was about three or four clicks look and it's too much so I've got to let it go a little bit but it's working isn't it now I did show before how to release a ratchet strap gently you you kind of get it like that click it rather take the tension release this one and bring it back There's that in. Okay. What to hit on? That's the thing. Okay. Right, that's gone in. I found a, an old one that I can put on the back. So I'll put that on the back with a nut and a washer and then when the new one comes I'll just swap it on while this suspension is all dropped like this you see it's all in a bit of a bind it'll be far less of a bind when the suspension is um, you know when the weight of the vehicle is down on the suspension as long as I can get the nut and washer on there that'll be okay I think I'll leave the bush out because I haven't got the right one might as well just leave it out Right out, back in a bit then. I put that track rod on there and I did it like I said where I put a plain nut on first, tightened it up and then took it off and uh, put the nylock on. I'll bring it back when there's more to show. Hello, you join me under the car. I'll just put this track rod on. So that's in place. The other one is in place. Um, the track control arms are in place, the anti-roll bar is in place but not attached at the front. I need the weight of the car down on the wheels before I can do that because it's just too much of a stretch otherwise to get, the, get it lined up nicely. So that's a good bit of progress there today actually. Um, as always, sometimes it doesn't pay to think too far ahead because you realise just how much is left to do. But um, yeah. The brake back plates could be attached. I've got to get the bracket that goes on there for the hose. I've got new hoses and then new brake pipes. But really I'm kind of jumping the gun. There's a lot more structural bodywork to be done yet. But at the moment I just don't feel like doing it. But all in all that's pretty good progress. It, it's taken a few days but... Um, you know, all the front end of the car is okay. Front suspension is in, by and large. And, um, yeah, it's all got to be done at some point, hasn't it? So why not now? Good, good shot of the axle stand there. Okay, righto. Take care of yourselves then, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye. Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. 
Um, I had a little surprise this morning. Uh, I'll just show you. Um, the seller sent me that bush. I only told him it was missing yesterday and it was on the doorstep this morning first thing so that's good service isn't it so I fitted that and put the nut on I haven't put the split pin in but I've fitted that and put the nut on so that's in well that wasn't easy I had to wind that nut all the way in then before I could get the split pin in but uh, in it is and because I thought I'll do that before I put the back plate on you know so I've got easier access so the, the hole is roughly at 45 degrees, so I can bear that in mind when I do the other side, which, which I'll do now. Righto, back in a bit. Okay, it's time to put the brake back plates on. That's, that stub axle is ready to accept it, so why not put it on? Okay, let's see about getting this in place then. Pick the bolts that have got the correct early style lock nuts, you know, the all metal lock nuts. Twin leading shoes, so you've got to look for the direction of rotation. The piston pushes forwards, you know, with the rotation. I was lazy, I could use my uh, gun, couldn't I? Good. Nice and easy, wasn't it? Okay, right, I've got my bracket there. So where does the hose go? Up here. I've got some new hoses, so let me go and find those. Ooh! I put a bolt in there because I had put um, a copper washer there, ready. There's my hose, there's my copper washer. And I just spent a bit of time looking at the sizes of the hexes. It would appear that this end is 14 mil, but that's close to 9 sixteenths. So I have got a 9 sixteenths flare wrench here, which is the best thing to use, I suppose. Okay, so that's tight. Um, that end there is. 15 mil or a Whitworth size so you know you couldn't put a ring spanner over to tighten that one up because this one's smaller it's also a bit out of shape puts quite a bend on them doesn't it still that's the standard setup let me go and just find a nut then so I can just, you know, <laughs> stop worrying about it. I just found that on the floor. It's a shake proof washer. I think that's what they use. But I want to use that one on the clutch because I think that fell off the clutch hose pipe when I took it off. But that, that's a pattern of the type of washers I'm going to try and find. Just get that started on there. Because I could make I could make the brake pipes up, couldn't I? And then just disconnect them temporarily and fit the washers. Okay. I could put the hub on, I suppose. I need to look at the seals and things, but uh <coughs> Okay. 
I'll do I'll um I'll clean all the bearings up before I run it but I just wanted to kind of get things in place you know to sort of take account of the hardware and things besides that I want to um I want to put the wheels on put the vehicle weight down on the wheels so that I can I want to put the wheels on and put the weight down on the wheels so that I can attach the front suspension things there. Hey, let's go mad, let's put the wheel on. Okay. I'll, I'll do the same on the other side, put the brakes on, put the pipe on, um, put the drum on, put the wheel on, and um, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Cheers then, back in a bit. Hello. Um, I've put the wheels on both sides. Um, I've got a couple of old wheels there that I've put the car down onto, so the weight of the car is on the front wheels now. And that suspension bush there is closer to where it's got to go. Now I don't know any hints or tricks to get that into there, but I imagine putting a jack under it was going to probably help. But what I think I'll do, I'll, I'll get the bushes and put them in place. Maybe put um, a clamp on them to sort of squeeze them in and then start trying to manoeuvre the suspension up just had an idea if I, if I if I if I push on the top of the wheel yeah you can do that to maneuver it a bit so that might help let me ponder on it a little bit and I'll uh, I'll bring you back when there's more to show I'm, I'm under the car and I'm I've put the bushes in and I held them with a clamp and I've slipped the clamp off and I'm jacking the anti-roll bar there. This one appears to be going in a little bit before the other one. So I think I'll try and get it try and get it to up into there. Let's see if I can do that. I'll give it a pump on there. Give the jack a bit of a pump. Oh it's going, isn't it? Look. I'm trying to go. Oh yeah, it's going. Let me see if I can get a pointy thing in it. Maybe a screwdriver just to start it in the right direction. I'll concentrate on this one first. Okay, let's get it started. Oh, where's my hammer when you need it? Okay, good. That's got it started in the first side anyway. Right, let's get a hammer. Can you see? I hope you can see. Okay, it's not going to want to go through the other side, obviously. So how, what can I do to align that then? Has it gone? Has it gone? Sort of gone. Hey, it's gone. That's gone. Wow. Brilliant. Great. Great. 
Say like Brent and I in half ass custom. Okay, that's got it. That's in. So it's just a case of manoeuvring the other side now and uh, get that one in as well. Okay, let's get around that side. Right, that bolt is in, I hope the thread's okay. I can put a die nut on it if need be. Um, once it's all aligned and everything's relaxed and moved about, it'll probably, I could probably take that bolt out and put another one in. Why is everything blurred? What's going on? I think the thread is okay. So I can get a nut on that. And what I did, I made this long tapered drift bolt, which I managed to get that in, and then take this one out, and then get the original bolt in. So that worked okay in the end. I just didn't, wasn't able to film it very well. Yeah, so quite a lot of work done. Um, some of it only temporarily, you know, like putting the wheels on, but um, both struts built and fitted all the front suspension reassembled with the new bushes including retrofitting one that was supplied incorrect but then supplied correct so I've got that one in today um, all the steering has been cleaned up you can see one of them down there look all the um, all the track rod ends all cleaned up and fitted and freed up and made sure they work I fitted the brake back plates and I fitted one of the hoses and I've got to fit the hose on that side and then I lowered the car down onto its wheels so that I could load the suspension to be able to assemble the front of the suspension which I have done so yeah, a lot of work over the last few days. It was um, it, it was nice to have a break from welding and grinding because I, um, I don't know how much of it you've been following, but I ended up with a speck of something in my eye which has put me off. I had blurred vision for quite a long time. It's not so bad now, but um, kind of put me off. So I didn't want to do any welding and grinding. So I've kept any of that sort of thing to a minimum. But things are progressing well, I would say. Things are progressing well. And I will continue to keep pushing forward. Even though cosmetically the car doesn't look much better. Because I haven't really done much to the external panels. But, you know, it is becoming much more sound. Um, I've got a lot more to do yet. So there's... Plenty more content to come because I will film it and I will show it. I will put all the videos out. Um, there is a time lag between me doing the work and the videos going out because I am being quite fastidious in showing absolutely everything. I'll do some work, I'll film it and I'll show it. And it's just it just takes a long time to put it all together edit it all and get it out as a video but i'm enjoying doing it i'm still enjoying doing it and i hope you're enjoying watching it you know it's no hardship is it just sit there and watch me fixing stuff okay that's quite a big round of work there that i've done and i'm not 100 percent sure i'm gonna what i'm going to do next but as always when i do do something You'll be the first to see it. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for following along. Take care and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers then. Bye.